Inside of Obsidian, you can query, search for any file page inside of your Obsidian Vault, and you can display that as a table, as a list, or look for specific task blocks inside of Obsidian using the Data View plugin. If you go to the bottom left of your screen, open up the Settings tab, turn on the Community plugins if they're turned off, click on Browse, search for Data View and install the plugin, push on the options. And personally, I suggest you turn these two settings on because it allows you to use JavaScript, which is more advanced use cases, but it means you don't have to worry about the settings later on. If you plan on searching for tasks in data view and using tasks, I would also suggest you turn both of these on. This one uses the emoji shorthand, so you don't have to write out words, it's just using the emojis. And this one automatically completes the task when you tick it off inside of the data view query result. Once you've activated data view, you then need to actually add a code block into the Obsidian page you want the query result to be in. So you can push the three ticks and that will create a code block. To use data view, you type data view next to the top three ticks and to use JavaScript, you add JS on the end of the data view. If there is an error in the query, you will see a box that looks something like this that says there's a passing error or passing failed and will then give a description as to why it's failed. In this case, it's looking for a type of result. So it wants table, list, task or calendar. Calendar I'm not going to go through in this video. If you look to the top right of any code block, you can see the button that says edit this code block inside of live preview. But I have a source mode page open to the left, which makes it easier for me to see everything that's going on. Something to note is that if you have a code block and you've written in what type you want, but there's no space underneath the type, there will be an error shown. So what I do is push enter. Now it shows the query result as I would expect it. With a basic table list and task query, it's going to list out every single instance. So all of the files in a table view, all of the files in a list view, and then all of the tasks in again, a list view, but they are tickable tasks. Every file inside of Obsidian has something called metadata, which is essentially information that's associated to the page. Some of it is implicit, so the time it was created, the time it was modified, and other metadata you can add to a page. I will leave a link in the description to all of the further documentation because there are a lot of different pieces of information associated with a file. But for this example, I'm going to use file.ctime. And what that is, is the file created time. And in the table, it's added a second column. So we've got the file name as a link and then we have the file created time as a second column inside of the list view it's added the information next to the file name but if I add file.c time to the task query it comes up with an error and you can see in the error message that it was expecting either from group by limit sort or where so the information that I'm asking for file.c time isn't in the task so task information is slightly different I've just added an example task down the bottom of the example note page and you can see we've got the task query with the three tasks and then the task down the bottom. This is the live preview of the example note page and now I'm going to add a source to my search query. So by adding from to the query I then added a source and what I'm looking for is a specific file. Now this file happens to be in a folder so I need to include the folder so the path of the file in the query and now when I look at the query the other results have disappeared because they weren't the example note. In my current setup if I wanted to look for the third note because it's in the root folder i.e. the main vault folder I don't need to put a path in because it is directly in the root so third note works and you can see it's changed the query results. Now if I'm looking at a folder so I put the example folder in the source instead of the note it's now going to show me all of the files inside of that folder but I still want the specific file without changing the source which means I need to add a where clause. So I've added where then I've added the information that I'm looking for. In this case, it's the file name, so file.name, very similar to file.ctime, it's information on the page. Again, have a look at the documentation linked in the description for a long list of it all. And then using an operator, so in this case, equals, it could be greater than, smaller than, not equal to. But in this case, I want the file name to equal. And then inside of quote marks, I put the name of the file, example note. And you can see the where clause works in the list query and the task query, just the same as the table.
Going back to all three files I have in the vault, what I actually want to do now is sort the files in a specific order. Now that I've added sort to the query and added in the information I want it to sort by, in this case file.c time, it's then going to sort the results for the file created time. I can add ASC to the sort results in all of the queries to change to the ascending order or use DESC for descending order and the results will change accordingly. A couple of additional tips that I think are useful for beginners is being able to change the name of the columns in a table view for a normal property that you've added. So in this case, file.c time, you can type as and then inside speech marks, add the name you want the title to be. So at the moment, there isn't one because there's nothing inside speech marks. But if I type out creation time, it's then going to show creation time as the column title, keeping the same information in that column. And if you want to add an ID to the table, so instead of it saying file, you want to say something else, you can remove the ID of the table by saying without ID, which removes the first column. And then you need to add your own column in. So in this case, I still want the file link to be there. So I'm going to add file link, very similar to the file C time, but you can see there's still an error. And that is because it doesn't know where to break the two columns up. So we put a comma in between file link and file C time. And now I have the two columns. We've got the file link column and the file created time column renamed to creation time. And then we can do the same thing with the file link and add a name to it as, and then in speech marks, name, whatever. With tasks, you're likely going to look for completed or uncompleted tasks or want to group them in a view. By adding group by to any of the queries, you can group the results. So that can be done in a table, list or calendar and any other JavaScript data view query. But inside the task query, you can group by status because status is information like C time, but is specific to tasks inside of Obsidian. And now when I go over to the data view query and say complete the example task, you can see it's now completed that task off. It's changed it and now it's saying, oh, no, that's completed. So that's a separate section. So we've got the completed group and uncompleted group in the results query. Alternatively, you could add a where clause still looking for status, but saying is it equal to and then for uncompleted results, add speech marks and then leave it empty. So it's looking for something empty inside of the task box in here. And because X is for completed tasks, you can then search for X or the completed task in the result query, which shows over here. I do have a blog post on my website that goes through all of this in a written format and down the bottom there is also a link to the community vault which is a community vault built by different members inside of the obsidian community that have loads of different data view examples for you to go through so you can download the vault and have a look through and learn other things that you can do inside of the data view plugin this is a shorter video included inside of my extended brain course, which goes through Obsidian and other tools that I use to get my work done. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more nuanced use cases or my own personal workflow, have a look at the course linked in the description below.